Has this ever happened to you? You're in your early turns of game three at an RCQ and the game is looking super close and even. As you draw for your turn, the buzzer goes off in the store and the judge calls for time in the round. You and your opponent both know that this game won't end in five turns and now you're both stuck with a draw and you're wondering how you could have won the other games faster. Rounds like this do happen, but there's a way that you can play that will not only help you avoid going to time with an aggro deck for instance, but also help you play proactively to secure some games you might have missed the winning line in. Let's talk about playing with a purpose. Let's kick things off with an example. Say you're playing Murktide in Modern and you draw your opening hand, which includes a Consider, an Unholy Heat, some lands, and some other spells. You play a land and pass, knowing that you have two options depending on what your opponent does. They take their turn, they draw, play a DRC, and a Mishra's Bobble to surveil a card on top of their library. You decide that DRC isn't worth your Unholy Heat, so you Consider, and you see a Ragavan. Dang it! If only you killed the DRC, then you could get a dash in and steal that card they left on top. You end up killing the DRC anyway and play the Ragavan. They untap and dash a Ragavan of their own, and now you're the one who's looking at needing to protect your own cards. Now I'm not saying that you need to be a psychic and predict what you and your opponents will draw each and every turn. Obviously you won't know what deck your opponent is playing in game one of a match, but what if this is game two? Would you take any information into account and played your turn differently? What if they played their Ragavan on turn one? Would you still have committed to the Consider, or would you have killed it? But, as you're taking in all the information that has happened, how much time has elapsed in the round? Before you know it, it could have been taking 30 seconds on your opponent's end step to debate if you're going to consider or kill the thing, and then another 30 seconds as you draw your own card and think about what to do. That's an extra minute every single turn, and could be 10 minutes or longer in a single game. The essence of playing with a purpose is that you are always thinking about what you're going to do, both on your own turn, and your opponent's turns. You've got a plan that you want to stick to and execute as your plan A, and you're thinking about what could happen where it's still okay to do that. Then, when something new pops up, you need to be able to shift your mindset away to a plan B, which you might not have fully fleshed out yet, and that's okay, but shifting your mindset is the important part and committing to it. There are a lot of times when I'm playing a game of Magic and I get so caught up in what I wanted to do that I untap and attack into a creature that I missed having hidden reach, or I misevaluate the threat level of a card my opponent has played, which in fact makes my entire plan obsolete. Let's take a look at another example. This time, you're playing Red Deck Wins in Standard and your opponent is playing Rakdos Discover. You've got a decent sized board with a Monastery Swift Spear, a Phoenix Trick with a plus one plus one counter on it, and a flipped Kumano. You're down to only two cards in hand, a Play With Fire, and a Witch Stalker's Frenzy. Now you know that that Frenzy is in your deck for one card specifically, Shieldred the Apocalypse. If your opponent gains life and stonewalls an attacker with Shieldred each turn, you're gonna lose that race. Your opponent is currently at 12 life as they take their turn, tapping three of their four available mana for a Preacher of the Schism and passing the turn with a couple of cards in hand. You draw your land for turn and decide that you need your Frenzy for a Shieldred, so you attack into the Preacher who trades with your Swift Spear and a Play With Fire because you want to kill the blocker. Your opponent is now at 8 life, untapped, plays a land, and then another Preacher. You draw a Spleef for the turn, but they kill it before combat with a go for the throw. You think for a little bit and decide to pass since you can't attack into the other Preacher now. Suddenly, they've quote unquote gained more life in these turns than they would have with a Shieldred in play. The next few turns slip away from you slowly, draining the clock before you shuffle up for a game three. Now let's take a look back here. If you had used the Frenzy on the Preacher after declaring attackers instead of going on the Play With Fire plan, you could have not only kept an attacker, but you could have done six damage in combat alone, getting them down to six life instead. If they untap and do cast Shieldred, your worst fears in this situation, you still have the line to kill it if you draw a burn spell with the same attacks you made last turn, or you just kill them outright because you've got 6 damage even with blocks because that play with fire is still in your hand. This gets them before they can even gain life and doesn't even need the knowledge of your next top deck. Because your mindset was so locked into this is my anti shieldred card, I can't cast it without shieldred there, you weren't playing with the purpose of winning. You were playing with the purpose of what you think your card's rules are for. 
Instead, now we've used up a lot of time trying to figure out how we can deal with the board the way it is, playing extra turns after we've lost our advantage, and now needing to decide when we need to concede to play the next game in order to save enough time in the round. Constantly re-evaluating the board state and adjusting your plan sounds tiresome, and it can be. That's why the best thing to do is to keep playing the game so it becomes more of a second nature type thing rather than an active thing that you always need to be considering. In fact, you actually might already be doing some of these things that save you time and lead to winning lines already without even realizing it. For instance, maybe you're deciding on if you want to thought seize someone on turn one, or if you want to fatal push and thought seize the next turn when they draw an extra card because you know that you want to hit their Ren and Six that's in their hand because you have no way of dealing with it if it resolves. Another form of playing with purpose is evaluating the power of your removal spells in hand. For instance, you could be using a cut down over an anoint with affliction on a deep cavern bat because you know that even though the bat could maybe come back from the graveyard with something like a cruelty of Gix, but your opponent is likely to play a preacher of the schism on the following turns. If you think about playing with a purpose in these terms, then you'll quickly realize that this is just more of the same thing you're already doing, and you're just applying it to different scenarios that didn't cross your mind before. Quick decisions like this are not only adding to your win rate, but also speeding up the pace of play and allowing you to end matches before the clock does. So how are you planning to play with a purpose? Let me know where you've been able to speed up your gameplay and how it's helped win some games in the comments below. As always, if you like what you've seen, tap that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.